Hello there, welcome back to the new video. Today we'll be talking about this paper which is titled as Self-Improving for Zero-Shot Named Entity Recognition with Large Language Models. So it is from researchers from Ziyang University and National University of Singapore. By reading just the title, it's pretty clear what this paper is going to be. It's about using large language model for doing named entity recognition in a zero-shot fashion. And there is some mechanism of large language model improving itself. So just to clear certain terms over here, NER or named entity recognition is one of the popular tasks in NLP where the idea is like if you have a sentence that has let's say these five words, against each of the words you have to say whether it's part of a certain class or not. So essentially it's a word level classification that you're going to do. But eventually when we comprise it off and read the output, it could very well be let's say the first thing is person, the second is person, the third is nothing, it's others. Then you have location, then you have location. So once you parse it out, you should be saying person against the two words that makes it up as a composite entity followed by something which is others. And then again, a composite entity of location which comprises of two words. So there are a lot of models that you can use to perform this task. Primarily, any model that takes in set of words and outputs prediction at each of these words level is a good to go system. Now talking about zero shot, zero shot is the idea where we try and say that the model that we are going to use hasn't seen anything that we are going to infer for. So for example, if we pick any large model, let's say chat GPT, and we are talking about, let's say something in finance, and particularly let's say extracting a few things from finance articles. So with zero shot, what we are saying is we haven't taught our system to do this, but we'll see how well it does out of the box based on its generalization capability. So that's the idea of zero shot. And in case you try to provide a few of the examples for model to kind of steer through and understand what it should be expecting, then that is often termed as few shot. And in this case, it would be few shot NER. Let's now delve into the paper and see what this self-improving framework looks like. So they had a pretty descriptive figure. Yeah, this one. So this is an entire overview of the self-improvement framework that they propose for doing zero shot NER with the large language models. So let's go through this step by step. So think of a situation where you have a lot of data in your database and you wanted to understand what all entities do I have in across all the text files that I have. So clearly with the trend going on these days, the first thought that comes onto your mind is using, let's say, any of the large language models. It could be closed or open, doesn't matter. For now, let's think of you're using chat GPT or some version of OpenAI model. And the idea is that we give it a prompt saying, given entity label set, and these are the entities that we are interested in, we are asking it to recognize named entities from the given text. And then we give it a text and the answer colon. And now we expect the GPT or any of the large language model to kind of autocomplete itself by returning the relevant entities from this piece of text. So to this point, this is a typical zero shot prompting method. So now let's move on to the right side of it. And we see as and when this goes to input to your GPT model, you have a stage called self annotated data. So what it does is It'll try to use the prompt that you gave over here. And based on that, it will go and perform annotation on all the unlabeled corpus that you had for the entities that you asked for. And it will not only do that, it will print out certain numbers against each entities and also at the entire output level, which is 3.3 in this case. So these are entity level confidence and 3.3 is sample level confidence. So how confident is your model when saying White House is a location versus White House is a facility? Clearly in this case, it says I am three points confident saying it is a facility than saying it's a location. And 3.3 comes from just averaging out the values, which is five plus three, eight plus two, 10 divided by three because it predicted for three entities, which comes out to be 3.3. And similarly for another row in that unlabeled corpus, which could have been this, it predicted all the entities and the confidence around them and then the confidence around the entire sample. So this exercise has done all the data that you have in your unlabeled corpus in a zero shot manner. And this step is called self annotated data. Okay, yeah, I forgot to tell. So the scores that you see over here, right, which is 2.0, 4.0, 1.0 against each of the entities are basically self consistency score that the model has put in. Now self consistency again is one of the prompting methods 
wherein the idea is we have different versions of your prompt running at different temperature or it could be same prompt running at different temperature either the combination holistically makes sense for doing self consistency the main crux that it holds is how many of the variations that you have tried confidently come out and say okay white house is a facility so let's say if i were running five versions of this and three of them said white house is a facility then that's a score of 3 that i've given so it's again kind of a ensembling technique wherein if most of the prompts get to the same answer you kind of have a confidence on that output saying that should ideally be correct you can just think of this in random forest terms the way it bags out things if you're doing classification so the most common class is the one that gets predicted by most of the trees and that way you kind of have a higher confidence in that prediction so that's the idea that we're talking about So clearly with the scores that we have generated we will get to know like not all the predictions that the model has done will be confident either at the sample or entity level. So there has to be some way of selecting reliably from this sample. So in this paper they propose like two methods, two to three methods, one of which is you put a cutoff threshold at a entity level saying I'll only pick up examples that have entities at least a score of 3. that could be one of the methods second is you can do it at a sample level that averages out the entity level score saying i'll pick up only the samples that have a score at least of a 4 but again it's again open to discussion you can think of any other method that works well and you are able to reliably select some of the samples from there so let's consider you had 10k samples over here after you're done selecting based on threshold you are at a count of let's say 1000 Now clearly not all 1000 can be used as a part of in context learning as in you cannot give all 10000 examples in your prompt right so then they propose a step where you effectively retrieve samples from this set of 1000 examples so which they call as sample retrieval strategies of which one is like you clearly just pick up some x number of random samples from this 1000 set the second is based on nearest neighbor for each of the samples that you have in this set you take the embedding of that with the input prompt calculate the similarity and whichever is most similar you just create a set out of it and choose randomly from there that's what they call as diverse nearest retrieval the one that they propose and which works the best as per the results table what they have said which is diverse nearest with with self consistency ranking what it does based on 1000 examples that you have generated over here you embed all of them using any transformer model you have the embedding of the input prompt you calculate the cosine similarity and pick let's say top k from there based on the scores now you rearrange all the k samples based on their sample level self consistency score because that anyways you will get right it could be the 3.8 for 3.3 4 or whatever that value is and you sort them in the decreasing order and then you select some top k where now this is small k which is much much smaller than the capital k that we initially retrieved and let's say this comes out to be top 3 so now these are the three examples that you'll pull in as a part of few short examples so after you have retrieved what we essentially were doing is we had the initial prompt we added these reliable self annotated data and then we had a test query for which now the model had to make the prediction so that's the entire loop and as you can see right let me just clear this one off a bit so that the loop is sorry so that the loop is clear to you guys because now this can go for n number of times right what i just told was one loop but that again can be used for doing prediction on the unlabeled corpus that you had and you again extract some reliable samples you retrieve some top k samples you again do the prediction on the validation set and based on how good or or how your validation score is fluctuating you can choose this cycle count which is n to how many times you would want to do so that's the idea of the entire paper let's move on to the results table and see how good or how bad is this system doing so they tested this across multiple data sets we'll focus on the average scores with no demonstrations which is if we just do zero shot and try to do entity recognition we get an average score of this now this is the number that we are interested in which is 57 55 57 and 58 so if you don't do any selection which was at you don't do any threshold at entity or sample level this was one of the papers that they referred but yeah, i didn't had a time to go through this so we can let go of this part but i'll link the paper in the comments make sure to check it out however if you see it's roughly 0.5 points increase so yeah feel free to go through that i'm pretty sure two stage majority voting is something new and exciting anyways 
So if you don't do any sample selection versus if you do any sample selection method, we are at a score of 55, 57 and 57. So clearly sample selection is helpful because the scores are roughly two points positive for both the sample selection strategies. So you can do either of the sample selection strategies followed by the retrieval, which is diverse nearest SC ranking. And you are jumping from 53 to 57 directly with this method. So yeah, that was interesting. And I guess we are done with this paper. So if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe to the channel and share it across the friends to whosoever is interested in such content. We'll talk again soon. Bye bye and take care.